Yo, yeah, what's going on guys? Boy, we here back on the Mad 16 and today we got you guys the first set of the run plays from Gun Wide Trips Tight End Slot. There's going to be two uh, two separate videos for this that are going to be coming out today. The first one is going to be just running it with the running back and the second one is going to be the quarterback runs and options and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that, you'll be able to check it out later today and if not, then you'll be able to get the run scheme from just the running back today. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is halfback base. Um, it's in the Gun Wide Trips Tight End Slot in the Carolina Panthers offensive playbook. As you can see, I am Carolina Panthers. And the links in the description below if you guys are interested in the playbook. So halfback base is going to be the first one. That's right there, that X play. We're going to pick a random play. Um, so this is a pooling play where you're going to hit the edge the majority of the time. So the quicker the running back, definitely the better. You just have to know when you have to hit the edge, where you have to cut, and all that good stuff. See, Jonathan Stewart's going to make the play look pretty good right there by breaking off that first tackle. Um, but Jonathan Stewart is pretty slow. So since this is like a running player, we have to hit the edge. Unfortunately, it's not going to be as effective because we're using a slower running back. But that's okay. I'm um, going to see this. Since you do have a pooling guard, uh, you're almost always going to be able to hit the edge. Uh, but not... Not necessarily always, but the majority of the time because you have a pulling guard that they're going to be able to seal it up for you. In situations like this where the, there's just no one standing over that gap, sometimes you are going to have to make a double juke move to the inside. and you got an open, huge open area right there, and there you can either try and juke them out or just, just uh, take the tackle. You know, spin so you don't get hit stick and all that good stuff. So it's a double juke. If you wanted to double juke to the right right there, you just hit left and then right on the stick in rapid succession. So you, you hit the left first to put your left foot down, and then the right stick to juke off your right foot. And I hope you guys know how to double juke this here. If not, you know, it's 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 fine. You, you learn today. So let's go ahead and run this play a few more times. going to run the ball. That time we're going to be able to hit the edge right after he block sheds, but we're still going to be able to get around him, get a nice few amount of yards. And like I said, Jonathan Stewart is incredibly slow, so he's definitely not uh, the best back for this play. If we had a quicker back, we're going to be able to hit the edge right there before number 47 can block shed. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, Jonathan Stewart isn't the quickest running back. So the blocks don't seal as well as they would if you had someone speedy there. And by speed, all you really need is like 94 to 95 speed. Is 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 this most speed you need to make this run play effective? Um, that's going to be it for this run play. We'll go ahead and run it one more time. And this is goal line, so, you know, it's it's whatever. And that's going to be for the halfback base. I definitely think, as far as just normal running the ball, I think the halfback base is probably the most effective run play in that formation. So if you're definitely trying to ground, uh, pound the ball, that's probably for sure going to be the best running play in this uh, in this formation. So next one we're going to do, we're just going to go in order the halfback mid draw. Halfback mid draw is definitely one I don't recommend. Uh, I actually think this is one of the better halfback draws in the game out of this formation. But just because it's one of the better ones, it doesn't mean that it's still a good run play. Uh, you know, it's virtually useless. Um, I, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm just not a fan of the draws this year. Uh, some of them out of single back are all right, but anytime they're blitzing, it's completely worthless. But it's okay to get a good, usually two to three yards, maybe if you ever need like a two or three yard gain. This is almost always going to get you it, unless they stack the a gap like that. Never run a halfback draw if they're going to stack the a gap. Um, with that nickel formation. So you, you're going to see I'm almost always going to get about two to three yards, but it's only going to be two to three yards. So if you need to make it like a manageable third down or something, it's about the only time to run this play. And that's all I'm going to get into that because that play really is just that bad to where it shouldn't even like really have its own thing. Just run it when you need about two to three yards and it's not like an obvious blitzing down. That's the best time to run that play. Um, so the next play would definitely be the halfback counter. And this play it really isn't that bad. You have a pooling guard, um, but you definitely want someone quick. And Jonathan Stewart is not uh, definitely not the guy here. I would say for the counter, you probably want somewhere at, at somewhere at least 96 speed to be able to hit the edge. And I know that's pretty high up there, but you really, really do have to have a lot of speed to run the counters in this game. Or else, you know, you're just going to instantly get chased down because the counter really is about hitting the edge. And the counter is really good for people that are coming out in, like, man-pressed coverage and they're not base aligning. Because there's, if they're not base aligning, then there's not going to be anyone in that vicinity because you only have one receiver out there. So if they're man aligning or not base aligning, then the only uh, person who's going to be over there is the guy covering Ted Ginn. There's not going to be anyone standing over there. So it's going to be a, like a huge, huge gain almost every time if they're not going to base align. So that's really the best time to come out in a play like this. Um, so it's really not a bad play. It's just going to look bad uh, in practice mode with Jonathan Stewart because he really doesn't have the speed to be able to run counters. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I'm not going to run. I'm only going to run it one more time. But uh, it's not because it's a bad play. It definitely is still a good It's still a good choice to make. You just 
you kind of just have to have someone decently quick, but that's going to be it for the counter. So I would say halfback base and the counter are both pretty, pretty good. And the next one is definitely going to require you a lot of speed. Uh, probably the same thing as the counter. I, at least 95 speed. Uh, and that's going to be the buck sweep. Anytime there's a sweep, uh, I'd hope you know that you need speed. I believe this is the quickest guy on the team. And even then, he's only at like 89 speed. So the buck sweep is a play where you have three pooling guards. So you really are trying to hit the outside almost every time. Sometimes you're going to have to cut it upfield to not take a loss like I did right there. It just depends. Like if you run the ball seat right there, we don't really have the edge. We're going to juke to the inside, and that's what we're going to have to do right there. But the quicker the running back, the better chance you have of breaking off a, uh, a really good gain. So this is definitely uh, – this probably gives you the best chance – at getting a, a really nice gain because you you know you have all those blockers pulled over there it only takes like you only really have to make one guy miss and you're almost always going to be taking it for a huge gain um see like right there that's what it's going to look like a lot of the times and if we have the speed we're going to be able to house call that uh so that's why it's really important that you do have a lot of speed but uh the quickest guy on the carolina panthers um offensive roster really is this worker guy well, running back wise that can that can take a handoff so that's that's why you see like we have the holes we're just unfortunately not able to hit them because we're really slow but you guys can definitely see that this is a really effective run play you're either going to get swallowed up and gain about one to possibly nothing or you're going to get a huge gain so this definitely has the highest gain potential but if you're looking for like a consistent few amount of yards then halfback base is definitely the way to go but you guys can see that this definitely is like a high chance play where you're going to be able to get a whole bunch of yards. So if you're definitely looking, if you got a fast running back and you're looking to break off a big gain, like uh, like those like those passing downs, like third and long, where people are going to come out in quarters or dime and nickel, this is definitely a good play to mix in there because you're going to be able to hit the edge if you have a quick running back because they're not going to be stacked over there. So you're going to have a bunch of blockers deep down the field against like cornerbacks, and you're going to be able to rip for a huge, huge gain. So this play is not necessarily situational. It's just if you use it at the right times, you're going to get huge huge gains. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. So like I said, this is part one of the two-part running plays in this formation. So if you guys like it, definitely give it a like, a comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for later um, for later today for the read options and the quarterback run plays. Uh, follow me on Twitter. It's going to be down in the description below. And as always, 